Hey, welcome back. My name is Chris Miller, and in today's tutorial, we're going to press on a little further into the WordPress loop. In our previous video, we covered loop basics and uh, how to find that in the WordPress documentation and a little bit about how that works, but I, I don't think that I maybe have done it any justice in using some real world examples and then also trying to break it or see um, how it applies to maybe a single page or maybe how it applies to looping over a bunch of posts. So let's get started. Um, all right, we're here in our existing test site. We're just going to click admin, which should bring us back here to the back end. We did leave off on um, a demo page, I think. Let's see. Demo page. We'll click view page. Uh, Twitter banner design. Let's go ahead and get this open in our code editor here. Uh, let's see. Made a mistake there. We're going to click on uh, the folder icon. Go into app, public, WP content, themes, and I believe we were working in the 2021 theme. Yes, we were. And we're gonna click and drag this on to VS Code. Great. Okay, let's clean this up. Let's get rid of the content. Get rid of that function. Let's go ahead and indent this. And we're gonna create some space here. Okay, so uh, if you did not watch the previous video on Loop Basics, Definitely check that out. Um, that'll give you some context into what we're doing here. Uh, but we already have our loop here. So if I hit save, I'm gonna refresh and we're gonna see nothing because we're not outputting a title or, or any content. So we'll go ahead and put uh, the title back in and then hit refresh and we're getting demo page. Again, that's our title from the back end. All right. Uh, so let's try something here. Let's try to put the title outside of the loop. And because this is a single page, uh, there's a great chance that this is going to work all the same. So hit save, refresh, and it did. So the reason why I said I, I wanted to push this further and give it a little bit uh, uh, justice from the previous video is that um, there's going to be cases where if you're viewing a single item, uh, functions that WordPress provides you like the title or the content can work outside the, the loop. Sorry, can work outside of the loop. You don't always necessarily need to use the loop. Um, I think that there's nothing wrong with always using the loop. I think that can instill best practices and making sure that that's always in place. But let's begin to take a look at another example where the loop comes into play, and that's going to be with posts. So we're gonna go over to our posts, and we're, we're gonna keep our hello world, and we're just going to create uh, post two, and hello world, copy that, publish, and then let's add a new post and say post three, Oop. post three, paste in hello world, hit publish. So now we have uh, three posts. And let's just go ahead and do a quick uh, edit there and name this post one. And then we'll update our slug to say post one, two. By the way, slug there is the going to be the URL for the post. So we have post one, two, and three. Now, um, in order to see these posts on a page, there's a couple of ways you can do it in WordPress. One way is you can set a particular page to be sort of the blog teaser page, and then you can configure the loop in a certain way. Um, we're not gonna do that uh, for this tutorial. What we're going to do is we're gonna take a look at WP Query, and we're going to look at how we can inform the loop to go get stuff for us based on what type of content type it is, and some other parameters. So what we're gonna Google search here is WP Query, and that should pull up uh, this top result here, WP Query class, which it is a PHP class. And when the page loads, uh, it's got some great information here, highly recommend 
uh, given it a read in your own time. And similar to the previous tutorial, when we looked at the loop documentation, there are two different ways to write it, standard loop and standard loop altern alternative. Uh, I personally like the alternative. Uh, it has several more PHP uh, open close tags, but uh, personally, I think it's a lot easier to write HTML uh, in between them rather than echo statements. So. Let's go ahead and copy out uh, this example, and we're going to delete this, open up some space there, and just paste in the example. So let's talk through this here. Um, what's going on is that the WP query class here is accepting uh, arguments, okay? And these arguments we're, we're about to define, and we're gonna take a look at all the different uh, arguments we can pass to this. But what that's then doing is storing this in the query. And down here, you can take a look at how we're targeting a method on this class called have posts. <clears throat> now, again, in our previous video, uh, the loop if have post while have posts, so I'm gonna highlight this, if have posts while have posts, we talked about what those did on their own in the previous video, but in this one now we're seeing something a little bit different, which is the dollar sign with the query and an arrow pointing to this function here. So this is a class and this is a method on that class. Looks just like a function and they're kind of synonymous, but you know, potato, potato, uh, we're not gonna get into semantics here. Um, and if you're not familiar with what this is, this is getting into object-oriented programming and you know hitting methods on a class. That'll be a separate video. So, um, so yeah, so we're, we're instantiating a new uh, object there. We're checking to see if it has posts. While it has the post, you can see that we're gonna output a title here. That's on line 17. And then between line 19 and 24 is an opportunity to do something else outside of the loop that, that we wouldn't want to uh, repeat. Then on line 24, we are resetting post data. Now, I'll try my best to explain this here. This function is pretty crucial in that if you're defining a WP loop like this or a, a new WP query, you need to reset it after you define it because if you do not, if there is another file or another loop that occurs at while the page is loading after this, it is going to interfere with that, all right? That's, the, that's the, the easiest way I can put it. So just make sure that if you're defining your own custom WP query that you're also resetting it. And then we have our else statement and else if we didn't find anything, then we're gonna output this message here. Sorry, no posts matched your criteria and then end it all. So if we hit save here, um, I'm actually not sure what's going to happen. Let's just refresh the page. Okay, sorry, no posts match your criteria. So we're getting this down here, which means that this up here is failing, right? We don't have any posts. And that might be due to the fact that we are not declaring any arguments. So this object has no idea what we're trying to do. So let's flip back over to the documentation and let's scroll down past. Okay, yeah, this is starting to get into the parameters. So you're taking a look here at them passing an array directly inside of the WP query. So what they're doing here is um, instead of passing in the args array, they're sort of defining it in line, I guess, as a, as a parameter is, the, is a good way of putting it. What we want to do, though, is we want to define, we want to keep args. This is a personal preference. And uh, what we want to do is we want to define our array here. Uh, there's two different ways to, def to define an array in PHP. We can either do, and maybe we're getting a little outside the scope here, but let's explore it. We can either define it this way, and let's just go ahead and grab 
this here. Okay, so we can define it this way with the um, array function. Is that is that a function? I'm actually not quite sure. Uh, and then passing key value, or we can use our brackets, which is kind of a shorthand way of doing it. So I like the brackets. We'll go with brackets. And uh, for instance, uh, we're in this example. We're saying we only want to show posts that. Um, that have to do with the author one, two, three. We don't have an author one, two, three right now uh, with an ID of one, two, three in this demo site. So we're not gonna use this. This is a bad example. So we're going to look though over here in our uh, uh, index, I guess, or Rolodex of sorts for post and page parameters, okay? Actually, no, we're gonna look at post type parameters. I think that's what we need. Because what we wanna do is we wanna target posts, just the blog posts. And you can see here that uh, post type is gonna be our key and it's telling us what some values could be. If we keep scrolling past here, we can see some examples, right? So right here, they're saying post type is equal to page. So let's go ahead and grab that as an example and paste that right in. We're gonna update it to post though, because we want that one, two, three post that we just created. And let's take a look. And we do have the titles for post one, two, and three. So that title again on line 22 here, that title function that WordPress provides to us is what's responsible for producing uh, those post titles there. What if we want to reverse the order though, right? Instead of it saying three, two, one, what if we want to say one, two, three? Well, there's a few ways to do it. We can do it by uh, alphabetizing, sorting uh, order by ascending or descending. We could do publish date if we want to do that route as well. Uh, so let's try publish date. Let's see. Let's just do a search on the page. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, how about this? How about, let's start with order. Let me get back to the top, back, 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 back. All right, how about order, order by? We'll start there. Okay, ascending, descending. What was it? Was it order by? No, just order. Order by, okay, yeah. So we'll do order. And let's say, was it ascending? Yeah. Let's try that. Okay. Refresh, there we go, one, two, three, okay? And let's go ahead and change that to, I think it was descending, three, two, one, all right? I'm not going, to, I'm, I'm gonna start wrapping it up at this point, but um, you know, hopefully you get the gist of this, super powerful. The big thing about this one, it's gonna take a lot of tinkering on your part and a lot of reading this documentation here, which is really easy to understand in my opinion, once you've kind of wrapped your head around the layout of this entire uh, page here. Uh, I'll touch on that for just a second before we close out. Um, let's, let's go back to the top here. Okay, we're gonna look at the table of contents. We're gonna go back to order and order by. Okay, so this is the, the section title. Uh, then we've got a little description about what this particular parameter is going to do. Then we have um, what the uh, key is expected to be, whether it's a string or whether it's an integer, uh, and then some other additional information about it. What values is that key going to accept, right? Ascending, descending is the value that the order key is, uh, is expecting. Order by, okay? So if we wanted to use order by, we can copy that line down below, change the key to order by, and then we can use any one of these items here to change how we're ordering 
or what we're ordering by. So, um, yeah. Okay. We'll stop there. Uh, hopefully, I did uh, a little bit better this time at explaining the loop. Again, that first loop video, check it out if you haven't. Uh, I really just skimmed the surface on loop basics. This one uh, goes a little bit further. And the loop can be really powerful. It can get uh, it can get pretty complex depending on what you're trying to do and what information you're trying to source from different custom post types. So, if you found value in this video, please hit the subscribe button. Consider retweeting this video if you're on Twitter, and if you're not, come check me out on Twitter by hitting the follow button. I'm gonna stop rambling. Wrap up this video. See ya.